You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856 227 1360. Your opinion counts at 856 227 1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. 
Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. I'm Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7, Red State, we are everywhere, we are everywhere. And joining me today as my co-host is the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, George Landreth. George, welcome to Conservative Commandos. Hello, George. Take it off the mute, George. Pardon me? I said take it off the mute, George. We're live. Oh, yes. Okay. (laughs) Fair enough. My apologies. That's all right. I got a big kick out of that. I've got good news for our listeners because anybody who likes ice cream, there is a study out in mm-hmm. Japan mm-hmm. that says that eating ice cream right after waking up, in other words, ice cream for breakfast, mm. can result in improved alertness and mental performance. So this is great news because as a kid growing up, I never had the option of having ice cream for breakfast. And now I find out, I finally found the one time my mom was wrong. (laughs) Well, George, what about ice cream just before you go to bed? Anywhere in that study? I personally, it 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 deals with breakfast, but I have to say, I think this is a great study, and you and I should fill out a government grant, and we should study the effects of eating, like, ice cream right before a radio show. Yes. The effects of eating ice cream before lunch, after lunch, mid-afternoon, before dinner, after dinner, right before you go to bed, the whole nine yards. I would say in the middle of the night. You wake up in the middle of the night, you're feeling a little drowsy, and maybe you don't feel quite alert (laughs) enough. I bet you ice ice cream is the solution. So I think it's a great day for America. And I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm I'm prepared based on this study coming out of Japan to forgive them for um, for Pearl Harbor. This is awesome news. Well, George, I actually conducted a study about ice cream, except instead of eating ice cream, when I'd wake up in the morning, I would eat ice cream before I went to bed. And as a result of this study, I probably have about 20 extra pounds that I shouldn't have. But I enjoyed the study. Don't go raining on my parade now. (laughs) I enjoyed the study. I enjoyed the study. My gosh, George, there's more news than than ever before. And I thought maybe after the Obama days were over that things would calm down. They absolutely are not coming down. We have a new nominee for the Supreme Court. We have the Jack S. Party in Washington boycotting hearings. We've got a new Secretary of State. But in spite of all the news we're going to talk about today, George, I guarantee you the really big news story of the day we will miss. I guarantee it. And I'm not going to tell you what that news story is, George, until after we come back at uh, 30 after the hour. And then we'll... We'll discuss the big news story of the day. I'm going to keep you all in suspense up to that point. That's the teaser, right? Yeah, that's the teaser. That's One of our guests will be with us. It'll be a great conversation, lots to talk about. So don't think because we are not talking about it now that it, we won't get to it. Uh, but it's big they, news. Buy your phones. We will get to it. It's big news. After all, story. if it's important and you need to hear about it, we will be talking about it. Absolutely. It is indeed big news. Uh, I don't know if you saw the. Um, I don't know if you saw the um, uh, some of the arguments that have been going on about uh, everything from uh, the, um, the you know how the media's reported the uh, they reported it as the Muslim ban. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that kind of amusing um, because there are only seven nations listed, mm-hmm. um, and. Lots of nations that are predominantly Muslim are not listed. Mm -hmm. If it's a Muslim ban, it's not a very good one. Um, It seems to me, if you look at the names of the country, um, certainly they have some uh, connection to Islam. But the reality is that what they really have is they don't have a government. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, you know, they're broken states that have fallen into disarray. And there's nobody for us to call on the phone and say, hey, you know, Bob here would like to come to America, and we'd like to know what he's been up to. Mm-hmm. Is he a criminal? 
And since we can't make that call, proverbially speaking, of course, um, they just happen to be countries uh, that are or Islamic. You know what I mean? But it, it's kind of an odd... Uh, they call it a Muslim ban. And one, it's not a Muslim ban. And secondly, it's just a four-month uh, moratorium until we can kind of figure out what's going on with some of this stuff. I just find the, the less disingenuousness fairly stunning. And I'm a person who my, our listeners have listened to say things like, these people are lying sacks of rotting fecal matter. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so and there was, I wasn't coming at this with rose-colored glasses, but they really, you, you read the first two sentences of most of their articles, and you can find almost as many lies as you can words in the sentence. George, I love I love that. I haven't thought about it in that way, and I thank you for bringing that to my attention. These are governments, or these are countries without a a government. And this is what I've said. You know, they want to. How do you vet a Syrian coming here? You're going to call Assad and say, "Hey, Assad, do do us a favor. Look up Joe Schmo and tell him uh, what what he's been up to for the past." Week. 20 years. I bet they don't even have birth certificates in Syria, George. And if they did, I don't know that Assad would be that interested in giving us the, the no. real story. Well, that's what I'm and, getting Iran, Now, Iran has a government that's functional, and they may have records on people because it's a police state. Um, but, um, well, <laughs> yeah, this is not a government we could trust to give us good information. And then you have uh, Somalia and Sudan and Yemen and, 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 and Libya. And uh, in many cases, thanks to... Uh, Barack Obama's foreign policy, these are states that devolved into uh, civil war and there isn't really any functioning uh, government there. But, you know, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Yemen, that's six of the seven. The only other country on there is Iran. And um, and we can't trust them, you know, even a quarter of the way that we could throw them. So um, right. it, it seems to me that um, it's just it's just very interesting to me that that, that they don't seem to grasp this um, you know they want to call it you know simplify it down to Muslim ban and it's um, you know it's like I heard a guy talking about uh, a Supreme Court nominee's track record and he said that um, he he characterized him uh, um, as believing that um, institutionalized or that that bribing public officials was a constitutional right, which is just ridiculous. But that was the way he wanted to uh, de define a, uh, a, a case that he'd uh, spoken on, apparently, um, Citizens United, in which he basically said, you know, people have a right to get together. They have a First Amendment right to congregate uh, in places and ideologically, and they have a right to pool their money and make contributions and be involved in political campaigns. And that really, kind of sounds like the First to, Amendment to me, George. But the left jerk. guy's reading of that is he, he just came right out in the, in the interview and said, oh, yeah, he said that we have a constitutional right to corruption in our politics. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, so these people are just constitutionally oh. incapable of telling the truth. Virtually every word out of their mouth is a lie. That's what I think is frustrating. And, and I'm not saying this because I want to be divisive. I'm <laughs> simply saying this because I would love to get along. But you can't get along with people who simply are just bold-faced liars. That's mm -hmm. just the way it works. It's it's just a it's a it's a rough world. That's how it is. George, I had a I heard something today that made me think a little bit. I wanted to get your opinion on it. And you know what, George, we'll do we'll get into this after our break because you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. With the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, George Landreth, and the lovable yet benevolent dictator here at the Conservative Commandos, Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with the American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. Today's show, like all our shows, is brought to you by the First Amendment, protected by the Second. George and I will be right back with more news and commentary. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander. 
of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. For rebroadcasts of our shows, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or at 8 a.m., log on to Leading Edge Radio Network. Or at 11 p.m., highplainstalkradio.com. Or you can hear this show and all the shows that are part of the Conservative Commandos Network from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. 832-999-1199. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. You don't even need a radio. Just need a telephone and this number. 832-999-1199. I also want to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Conservative Commando, where it just goes CCR Show. You'll find us on on Twitter, on Facebook. It's Conservative Commando's radio show. We have a Facebook group page. Please join us. This is my invitation to you to do that. George, I wanted to get your opinion on something. Yes, sir. This morning, as I do, I was watching Fox News and some of those other alphabet networks, and there was one guy, a Democrat, you know, one of those people from the jackass party, come on there and say, well, Democrats only have themselves to blame for what's going on in Washington and Congress today because they don't turn out during the midterm elections. And I thought about that for a minute, George. And you might remember how Rush Limbaugh used to call a group of people the low-information voter. Oh, yeah. And I got to thinking about that also. And I got to thinking about why wouldn't people turn out during an off-year election? And I also got thinking about the low-information voter. Call them, I will call them the stupid and ignorant voter. Yeah. I would venture to say a large percentage of the jackass party do not vote on off-year elections because they don't know who they're voting for. You know, a lot of people will not go to the voting booth if they 
they think, oh, I don't know this guy. I don't know what he is running for. I won't go vote, right? So they don't go vote. So therefore, a large percentage of the jackass party will not go and vote during the off-year election. Sure, they'll go out and vote for president. You know, hopefully they know who's running for president, especially if it's somebody like Barack Obama. You know, they'll go out and vote for him. But come the off-year elections, come the elections for the, for the House of Representatives and the Senate, they go, I don't know these guys. I don't know who they are. I'm not going to go vote. So they don't. But on the other hand, I think Republican voters, especially the conservative branch of the Republican Party, has shown that they do come out to vote and they do come out during the off-year elections between the presidential elections, and especially over the last eight years or so. And that's why we have gotten such swings in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Think about this, George. When Barack Obama was first elected president, he had majorities in the House of Representatives and the Senate. But then conservatives and the Tea Party folk got involved. They got educated. They listened. They researched people. They vetted their candidates. And look what happened in 2010. 85 House seats changed hands. Now, I wanted to get your thought on that theory. Well, I think you're right. Um, You have different people showing up at different elections. What we find when you study elections over a long period of time, like you said, presidential elections will draw the most voters out. Um, off your elections draw a smaller audience or a smaller participant group. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, you hold a city council election and you have a yet smaller group. There's some logic to this, quite frankly. Um, the more powerful the position, the more people show up to vote for it because the more the perception is I better vote because this person could mess up my life. And, um, and so, you know, that's part of the rationale, I guess. But... Um, I do think that the more well-informed a voter is, the more likely they are to show up and vote consistently, regardless of how, quote, big the election is or how important it is, which is why Republicans do better, comparatively speaking, in off-year elections. And they, uh, you know, both off-year elections of Barack Obama's presidency, um, he was spanked in a historic way. I don't just mean a little bit. It was huge. Yep. And yet, and yet he managed to win both presidential elections. And um, that's because different people showed up to vote. Yep. And I think you're right. What you have is, um, uh, you know, we saw this when you ask people, you know, I'm with her, she's awesome, I'm voting for Hillary. And then you ask them, what, name me one accomplishment she had. They couldn't give you one. And um, I think that if you asked um, people in the Republican primary or before the general election, whoever their candidate was, whether it was Donald Trump in the primary or whether it was some, you know, Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio, if you asked why are you supporting them, what accomplishment does your candidate have, they could tell you what the accomplishment was. And when people walked in the voting booth to vote for Donald Trump, they had in their mind something that he had done that was an accomplishment. They weren't just going, oh, yeah, I'm voting for him because he's, he's the guy that's promised to, you know, whatever, increase my benefits or whatever else it is. I know that they don't like it when we say that, but that's really, there's truth to this. Uh, You listen to their campaign uh, uh, speeches and so forth. They don't like it when we say it that way, but that's simply the truth. What they do is they campaign promising to give people more stuff, pay for college, college should be free, more free health care, which, you know, if you think college is expensive now, wait till it's free. <laughs> you think medical, you know, medical insurance is expensive now, wait till government's providing it. Mm. Um, and, and we've seen that with Obamacare, right? We were yep. told it's going to be free. Guess what? It's, free health care. So, health care for everybody. Free health care. So mm. it gets really expensive when it's free. Yeah, and, sure um, and when government, you know, says it's going to be free. So I think that... Um, but that's how they play the game. So they play the game, and they're able to mobilize that, and they get people out. But it's harder to get people out uh, by external, 
you got to vote, you got to vote. The world's going to end tomorrow if you don't vote. Um, our side just goes out and votes because it's, what, it's part of being a good citizen. It's what we believe we should do, and so we do. Um, we're not really going out there to vote generally just because, you know, we think we're going to get something out of it. I've voted many times where I didn't perceive there's anything in it for me other than just good government. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that the base of the, uh, of the other party is at that position any longer. They used to be. I mean, you know, 1940, I don't know that there was a – the welfare state wasn't really firmly entrenched yet, and, and you didn't have – there were other differences in the party, and that wasn't the big difference. But that's – right now, you have a party, their base are, are people who view the government as the provider of benefits for them. And the base of our party is the provider of those benefits, the people who actually pay the bills. And so that's why things have gotten kind of intense lately. Because we, we've never had this situation where you basically have a party of that is predominantly. I have friends who are Democrats who have good jobs and have had been employed their entire life and never once collected a, a dime of anything. So I'm not saying that every Democrat. I'm saying the base of their party. The, there's a huge segment. The difference between winning and losing for them is this base, which is our people who view themselves as beneficiaries of government largesse, and the base of the Republican Party is people who are. You know, full-time workers have been their whole life and will be for the rest of their life, and they're the ones that make all this possible through their generosity. Well, George, I think, you know, both sides has their hardcore voters, okay? And, but then both sides have their less than hardcore voters. And as I said, I think the jackass party... Their low information voters are the ones that are that avoid elections unless it's for. Well, you know, first of all, George, we just had a presidential election. What fifty five percent of the people voted who were eligible, okay, for president of the United States, an election for president. Only fifty five percent of the people voted. You know, so we in this country tend to vote just a little bit more than we tend not to vote. And I think that when people have, have no idea who they're voting for, they don't, they don't go out and vote. They also don't know what they're voting for. They don't know what their, the issues are. So they stay home. George, uh, as I said, um, in the next segment, I, we've been talking about a few things, but we've really missed the big story of the day, George. I want you to know that. And we're going to talk about it after this break because you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Lander and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K90 Talk, iHeartRadio and AMFN 24-7 and a bunch of others. Don't go away, George, and I'll be right back and we'll talk a little bit about who our guests are for today. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today 
to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commando's Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. For a rebroadcast, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network at 8 a.m., Log on to Leading Edge Radio Network, 11 p.m., HighPlainsTalkRadio.com, or you can hear our show any time of the day from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. George, we haven't talked about the really big news yet, and we won't until we uh, let our listeners know 
who our guests are for today. Okay. So we'll save the, the really big news the really big after news. the... Uh, yes. It's unfortunate we couldn't get the uh, the newsmaker on the really big news to be in the show today. I guess that's what happens when it's a really important big cheese like that. You just can't get them. Well, we couldn't. Yeah, just couldn't. I know. That's what I'm saying. I, it's I mean, unfortunate. Cause these, no way. The other newsmakers we have are pretty impressive. I mean, we're going to start with Joe Miller. Yeah. Um, he, uh, many of you will remember, kind of at the height of the Tea Party movement, he shocked the political world. He came out of nowhere. He defeated incumbent Senator Lisa Murkowski for the Republican primary um, nomination in uh, for the Senate in Alaska. And then, of course, um, the uh, all you know proverbial hell broke loose, and uh, there was a real effort. She ran as independent. There's a real effort to kind of untrack him and so forth. And they were successful. We'll talk a little bit about that. But we'll have him on the show to talk about um, the Betsy DeVos um, Department of Education uh, cabinet pick and how she's doing and why she, she's had at least one or two Republicans peel off and say they can't support her, which I think is kind of interesting. Yes. And we'll f- talk about why that is and so forth. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, he's been uh, you know a good uh, voice Excuse me. <clears throat> He's been a good voice in the uh, Tea Party movement, and I think it'll be good to talk with him. Then we've got Jim Manley up. Now, he's a, he's a senior attorney at the Goldwater Institute, and um, he also used to work at the Mountain States Legal Foundation, a conservative legal foundation. He, and interestingly enough, he's um, had some good cases. He's you know fights for um, our right to self-defense, our right to free speech. Um, the right to keep arms, um, taxpayer rights, property rights, all, all the kind of stuff that you'd hope a good conservative would do. Anyhow, we're going to talk with him about what's going on in Berserkley, Berserkley, California, the University of Berserkley. Um, University of California, I guess, Berserkley. Anyhow, um, <laughs> very interesting conversation. And, and um, I understand that there's some, mis- there's some um, perhaps confusions with those... With those uh, um, I've, I've heard different stories that some of them, those protests and, and riots were actually about about other things than uh, what we've been told. But we'll, not, you know, we'll talk to him and get the real story. Sure. Anyhow, um, I just heard they, they were tired of the cold weather and they were <laughs> they were demanding more warm uh, weather. They wanted more climate change. Yeah. Uh, hence why they set everything on fire. <laughs> but it may, that could be I could be totally wrong. We'll get the word from him. Then we have Congressman Jody Heiss. Now he's from uh, Georgia. And um, he is, uh, interesting enough, when he ran for office, he actually said that he wanted to eliminate um, federal spending that wasn't delineated or permitted in the Constitution. What a novel idea. That's crazy talk if you're from the New York Times. (laughs) You know? I mean, what? Constitution? I thought that was just a dusty document we have on display over at the uh, archives. It's kind of like a famous painting or something. Anyhow. So uh, he's got a lot that we can talk to him about. Everything yep. from uh, he was at the National Prayer Breakfast this morning. He's got um, a uh, some some things to say about the uh, uh, the Supreme Court nomination. He's got a sanctity of life bill, and he also has um, a uh, um, a bill on free speech and fairness, which I think could relate to some of the stuff that's going on out in Berserkley. Mm-hmm. So I, it'll be a very interesting conversation. So uh-huh. that's kind of what we have coming up. But even with all that, George, with I know, all that, George, it's day. not the big news. Not, not the, the big, big news of the day. And the big news of the day happened at 721 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. Amateur weather prognosticator Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow, meaning six more weeks of winter. The proclamation was made in front of thousands of onlookers waiting in 30-degree temperature in the normally sleepy Pennsylvania hamlet of Punxsutawney, the home for the last 121 years to the annual February the 2nd event. So, George, six more weeks of winter. We got it from an authority, wow. Punxsutawney Phil. Hey, George, that, have they ever... Have they I ever, think the show should end right now. I don't see how we follow up on news like that. And right now, I mean, let's just, shut down. Let's just, sign off. Give our final goodbyes. And but that's George, the news. I mean, what else is there to talk about? Uh, 
It's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine, George. <laughs> have you ever been to yeah. Punk's Attorney, Pennsylvania? I have not. I have. I've seen it. I've seen it in the movie Gra uh, Groundhog Day. Or at least over and over again, and right? <laughs> yeah, over and over again. <laughs> but that's it. That movie is on more than any other movie either that was ever produced. But I've been to Punxsutawney. I spent uh, about a week there one time. You spent a week there one day? I spent a week there one time, yeah. And there one time? One time. Very nice okay. people. Very, very nice people. And it, they really are into, well, you know, Punxsutawney, the people who live in Punxsutawney, Thinks it's it's laughable, but it's hey, it's their bread and butter for a lot of them, right? So, right, you know, but uh, very very nice little town, and they have this building. I would say it's maybe 25, 30 foot long. It's about fifteen feet wide, and it's uh, about twelve foot high. It's glass enclosed, and that's where Punxsutawney Phil lives. I think there may be a Phyllis in there with them, but uh, they that that that's their little habitat. So that's that's what. How they did do. they create this? Because I mean, like, I I, why didn't I think of this a hundred years ago? I don't know. Um, you know, and I mean, wh how is it that Puxatawney Phil became the, this big deal? Because you know, it wasn't like when you know Adam and Eve were around. You know, Phil wasn't a big deal. So what happened? Here, here you go, George. Uh, check this out. Maybe we have an answer here. The tradition of Groundhog Day is believed to have evolved from a German celebration called Candlemas, uh, in a tradition that now shadows the Groundhog tradition. If the sun made an appearance on the midwinter day and hedgehog cast a shadow, there will be six more weeks of winter. Uh, the Candlemas tradition was brought to Pennsylvania and the rest of the U.S. by German settlers in the 18th and early 19th century. So there you go. You heard it here on a conservative commandos radio show. Wow. Hey, I still, George. I, you know, you should have saved this news to the very end. No, we got I don't know. I mean, like, you know, next up. I mean, I feel bad. I mean, I think normally, you know, that um, I think that Joe Miller normally yeah. be like hey, George. Let's get through this interview. break after Puxatani Phil. I don't know what there's to say. I don't know, but let's get through this break. We'll bring Joe on, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC. 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7 and a whole bunch of others. On the other side, we're scheduled to speak with former U.S. Senate candidate Joe Miller from Alaska. Be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Drink my wine. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. 
Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our shows, some people call them podcasts, check out our website, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com, or at 8 a.m., log on to Leading Edge Radio Network, or 11 p.m., highplainstalkradio.com, or you can hear our show from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Boy. All right. You know what, George? We're going to have to bring you back in here because apparently I wrote the wrong number down. Oh, okay. The second number apparently is not anything to do with him. Okay, we'll try that first number again, John. All right. That's one of the exciting things about doing live radio, George. Absolutely. Well, um, while they work on that, yeah. I just uh, discuss the topic a little bit, and then when we get him on, we'll have him join us in the topic. What do you think? No, I think that's a great idea. Makes sense. Uh, obviously, Betsy DeVos is um, an education reformer. She's been outspoken in uh, her belief that uh, we need to have more choice in public education, mm-hmm. that we need to have education become more focused on uh, the classroom and uh, – you know, the parents should have a bigger say and that perhaps the uh, teachers' unions should have a little smaller say in what goes on in our public schools. She uh, has been nominated to be the education secretary, and, of course, that was considered, oh, my gosh, a party that's been talking about school choice and a party that's been talking about education reform nominated somebody who believes in, of all things, school, school choice, choice and education reform. I can't believe it. How could that happen? And, and so you have some people acting like this is outrageous and so forth. And um, the reality is the more I hear her talk, the more I think to myself, I'm excited about the pick. Mm-hmm. But um, nonetheless, um, the uh, we've got two Republicans that have come out and said that they will not be supporting her. And I think that's most unfortunate. But when you find out more about them, it's not that shocking. One is Susan Collins of Maine. And the other is Lisa Murkowski. Of Alaska. Now, when we get Joe on the line, I, one of the questions I want to ask him is, Joe, if you had won that race with her in the three-way race, he beat her in the two-way race in the Republican primary, and you were Senator Miller, and you were um, to cast this vote, would you have a hard time voting for Betsy DeVos? And then I probably ask him. I, I know already. I'm sure I know what the answer is. I think he'd say yes. I'd be voting for her very easily. I'd be excited to vote for her. And I'd ask him, so why do you and uh, Marisowski see it? So- because we do yeah. have our, our guest with us. I need, need to put you on hold momentarily. And, George, would you please make, um, uh, please make the introduction? Absolutely. We have Joe Miller with us. Um, you may remember that name. I'm sure you do. All of the uh, true conservatives and Tea Party fellows can remember how he shocked the political world and he came out of nowhere to defeat incumbent Senator Lisa Murkowski, an institution in uh, Alaska. And he defeated her in the Republican primary. He went on to become the Republican nominee. Um, he entered then into <coughs> excuse me, a very contentious th- three-way general election. 
um, Republican Party bosses tried to undermine him, and you had uh, this weird melee of all kinds of people who thought they would be benefiting from a status quo sort of election that uh, waged a vicious multi-million dollar campaign, and they managed to barely and narrowly defeat Joe in the general election. Um, one of the things I want to ask you about is kind of how he would be voting differently on this uh, nomination than the uh, than Murkowski would be. But anyhow, he's appeared on national TV programs at Fox, ABC News, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, CBS, B- BBC, you name it, all the uh, alphabet letters. <clears throat> anyhow, and of course, he is a friend of the show here at Conservative Commandos. He's uh, been on a lot of other radio shows as well, Mark Levin, Hugh Hewitt. Savage, uh, Larson, Laura Ingram, you name it. Anyhow, we are very glad to have Joe. Welcome back to the Conservative Commando Radio Show, Joe. It's good to be on, Rick and George. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, while we were getting you on the line, I had to point out, I said, um, Murkowski said she's not going to vote for um, DeVos. I explained why I thought DeVos was a pretty good uh, nominee. And, um, <clears throat> and, um, uh, I said, I bet you Joe would have a different answer. So, Joe, let's assume that that narrow defeat was a narrow victory and you were the senator. Would you have announced the other day that you couldn't be supporting her? Well, I certainly wouldn't have said that, uh, you know, I didn't support her because of her position on school choice and charters. Uh, you know, what, what Lisa Murkowski has done consistently and historically is always described herself, of course, in the primary elections as a conservative or somebody that supports the Constitution, yet her record reflects completely the opposite of that. Uh, it's not just on these appointments with, like, Betsy DeVos. It's also with respect to her votes on internationalist treaties, like the Law of the Sea, her uh, consistent votes to increase the debt ceiling. She's wrong on all the social issues. You name it, uh, Lisa Murkowski, for the most part, votes like a leftist. And Susan Collins, arguably, is the only one in the Senate that's any more left than she is. Uh, but, you know, it's something that uh, Alaska has now put up with for a number of years. And uh, I can tell you that there's a lot of opposition to her up there. It's regrettable, obviously. I've, I've actually gone up against her twice. It wasn't just in that upset in 2010, but two months out from the election this time around, the Libertarian Party had their nominee drop out. They asked me to join the race. And we ended up, yeah, we ran a great race, came close, had the greatest uh, percentage that any libertarian has ever gotten in a federal race in the history of the United States, but still came up short. And again, the way that she won is the way that she always wins, and that is by uh, joining forces with the left, uh, particularly the teacher unions, the labor unions, uh, you know, the social leftist, and uh, and of course with her help in the division of elections and the rest is history. Certainly well, not a friend of conservatives by She was endorsed. I read an article that says she was endorsed by the Alaska chapter of the National Education Association, the NEA. That's the teachers group. Um, and um, and so is Susan Collins. Uh, she, Of course, not the Alaska, but the main chapter. And both of them get significant... Um, uh, significant contributions uh, from the uh, teachers union as well. Do you think that plays a, a role in this? Absolutely. They're without a doubt, you know, the folk that uh, supported her in the NEA contacted her and said, "Hey, uh, this is a gal you got to vote against." And and here, this is this is going to be one that's a little bit difficult, I think, for probably some of your listeners to figure out. But the DeVos family and DeVos herself have historically been max donors to Murkowski in every election, including the last one that I ran against her in, and in 2010. Uh, And so that shows just how much pressure the NEA leveraged against Murkowski for this vote. I mean, typically, Murkowski's a quid pro quo type person. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the whole crony capitalist mix that we're in right now as a nation, although Trump obviously upsetting that to some extent, and, uh, and yet she still voted against her despite that historical support, not just for uh, Lisa and her races, but also her dad and the races before her. Interesting. So that's, so that, that's an interesting point. In other words, she basically had a reason to support uh, uh, the nominee, but the pressure was just so great she's caved and she won't be. I yeah, I mean, that, that shows she how she has. I mean, I don't on any more yeah. money from the divorces. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to speak for the DeVos family, obviously. Oh, I am not uh, either, but I know if I were the DeVos's, I'd be annoyed. 
Um, I mean, you know, she, she has the right to vote how she wants, but I also have a right to not to not contribute as I want. Um, right, I, exactly. I don't contribute in any sort of ill will or, or some sort of pettiness there. It's just, um, and you know, I just, but you know, someone runs over me in the street, they shouldn't turn around later and ask me to write them a letter of recommendation. But what it reflects is, even though that is the typical approach Murkowski uses, kind of the quid pro quo, in this case, you really see who controls her. And the hard left controls her. There's no question about that. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's instructive. Uh, I think most people haven't figured out in Alaska. Republicans certainly do. She's never gotten a majority of the Republican vote. And, uh, in fact, you know, I've always scored far higher, even as a libertarian this last election. I received a majority of the Republican vote. And uh, and the reason why is because we know how she acts. It's not consistent with the conservative Alaskans' values, certainly not consistent with, you know, conventional Republican values. When is she up for re-election? Well, six years. Six years from now, wow. so, okay. Yeah, we could, we could suffer through That's another right. six years with her. Oh, wow. That's right, because she was just up this last time. Um, do you think that is, is is she one of these people that just hangs on forever and we just have to live with her, or is she somebody that uh, we can get an upgrade on? It, it, you know, six years is a long time I, for now, I realize. That's a lifetime. So we just put up on my Facebook page uh, last night, it's facebook.com slash Joe Miller Alaska, Joe Miller Alaska, a posting about her vote on DeVos. And one of the questions was asked, similar to that, you know, how long do we have to put up with Murkowski in Alaska? Uh, and, and, of course, she has all the, the money. I mean, she outspends, you know, I've been her challenger now twice, outspends her challengers 10, 20 to 1. I mean, she's got all the money that she could ask for, and in Alaska, of course, more than she needs. Uh, but it's more than just the money. It's more than just exposing positions. Uh, we also have huge vote integrity issues in Alaska. Uh, you know, she heard the co-chair of a write-in campaign back in 2010 is currently the head of divisional elections in Alaska. And until we clean up that, that corrupt agency in Alaska, she's probably going to be there in perpetuity. I think that if we got a fair vote in Alaska, uh, if we had a clean system in Alaska, it's likely she could be unseated. All righty. We are up against the clock. Um, Joe, can you tell people how they can follow the stuff that you're doing, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is that you use to, to, to communicate with the public at large? Sure, guys. I appreciate that. Facebook is Joe Miller, Alaska. Joe Miller, Alaska. Twitter, Joe W. Miller. I know that's a lot of words to remember. Just search Joe Miller, Restoring Liberty. You can pull all of it up on Google, even though I'm not a Google fan. Uh, we still have Joe Miller.us, our Restoring Liberty website, Joe Miller.us. Uh, appreciate any input, feedback, commenting on the stories. Uh, we're all fighting for the same thing, and, and that's to get this great country back on track. Excellent. That's good. We're coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Native Radio Network Studios, and we're th thankful to uh, Joe Miller for joining us. We, of course, are coming to you live uh, on WNJC 1360. That's our flagship station in Philadelphia. And, of course, around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7. Don't go away. More conservative commandos right after this. <laughs> This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. 
We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Greetings, fellow Conservative Commandos. It's good to have you back. This is George Landreth and Rick Trader. 
And of course, if you would like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, you should check out our websites, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. You can also log on to Leading Edge Radio Network at 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. You can log on to High Plains talkradio.com and with a phone and this number you can always listen to the conservative commandos all the programming on the conservative commandos radio network call this number 832-999-1199 and you'll be able to listen in on your phone we have with us jim manley he is a senior attorney at the goldwater institute uh there he is with the um with the Center for Constitutional Litigation, and previously he worked as a staff attorney at the Mountain States Legal Foundation, a uh, very fine and reputable conservative uh, legal foundation. Uh, In fact, his first case after graduating from law school was one in which he secured a victory at the Colorado Supreme Court, protecting the right of self-defense on college campuses. And through the years, his cases uh, have involved defending free speech, the right to bear and keep arms, taxpayer rights, property rights, all of these sorts of things where he has set uh, precedents that protect uh, our rights in in the Bill of Rights. And so we appreciate that. He uh, earned his JD at the University of Colorado, and and that's a Juris Doctorate, not a juvenile delinquency degree. I, sometimes people ask me if that's the case. It's probably just me, though. I'm sure Jim's never been asked that. But um, before that, he uh, served as associate, excuse me, where, when also at law school. He was the associate editor of the Law Review and the president of the Federalist Society. Um, and uh, before law school, he uh, was a professional ski instructor. He's also been a Reagan Fellow at the Goldwater Institute. Jim, welcome to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Thank you for having me, and thanks for that introduction. Absolutely. Just wanted to t- get your thoughts. Uh, you've, you've advocated for rights on campuses and tried to make sure that uh, campuses are um, a place where you don't have to check your Bill of Rights at the door. Um, oftentimes the left uh, says that what was going on, for example, we witnessed last night the... Uh, the uh, riots, they call them protests, I would say riots, um, they said, uh, you know, that's free speech at, at, at work. What say you? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Um, my, As you said, my first case was about uh, the Second Amendment on campus, uh, protecting the rights of uh, licensed uh, concealed carry permit holders to carry when they're on campus. Um, and, and now we're working on this issue uh, with the First Amendment. And, um, you know, I, I think there's actually a, a lot to commend the, the Berkeley administration for because when professors and students initially asked them to cancel this event, the administration said, no, we're, we're going to have this event even though we disagree uh, with um, um, you know, Milo's uh, views. We're going to have him on anyways. Um, and when the administration took that very reasonable position, uh, the reaction was what we saw uh, last night with uh, fires burning in the street. And uh, I think when you have faculty, especially, and, and students asking the administration to cancel a controversial speaker, I think right there you have to know that there's something wrong with the culture on campus, that, that they have forgotten what free expression means. And it's especially sad when it happens in a place like Berkeley where, where free speech on campus uh, you know, began. And so that, that's why we've got this, this model bill. Uh, See, I would argue free it. speech on campus began in uh, Virginia because uh, George Mason wrote the Bill of Rights and he's a Virginian, but uh, I'm probably going too far back in history. <laughs> well, no, that's But I would that's argue, of course, point. the whole United States, not just campuses, the whole United States is a free speech zone. Exactly. And actually, that's, that's what got us started on this issue, is uh, colleges abusing these postage stamp size free speech zones. And, and so we passed a bill in Arizona to prohibit uh, free speech zones and, and make the whole campus a free speech zone. And and then so this bill that we introduced at the Heritage Foundation on Tuesday is just an extension of that principle to get rid of speech codes that put feelings above uh, new ideas, uh, prohibit the administration from disinviting speakers, uh, and to get rid of that uh, favorite conservative concept, the safe space. 
where ideas go to die. Um, and obviously, I'm being sarcastic. Uh, the safe space is a uh, is uh, um, the bane of, of, of conservatives who care about uh, free speech. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the idea. I mean, I would argue that um, free speech suggests that we're going to have to hear ideas that we don't want to hear. Um, you know, things like speaking out on behalf of motherhood is awesome, or bright sunny days are pleasant. That's not speech that needs to be protected because nobody objects to it. The whole point of free speech is it presumes that people will say things that someone in society doesn't want to hear. And for us on the right, we re- we're used to this because we've listened to NPR, we've listened to CNN and CBS and ABC and MSNBC, and the list goes on and on and on. We've heard all these uh, news cycle portrayals of things, and they d- we don't want to listen to that garbage. It it assaults our values, and we're not happy with it. But we're used to the idea that's just how the world is. You need to accept that people will see things differently. That's okay. And the answer well, is you the, use uh, logic and facts and make a good argument as to why they're wrong. But you don't necessarily exactly. demand they shut up. The left right, doesn't and, generally yeah. have that problem. They've not actually seen and grown up hearing different people and different ideas. So they're shocked. They, what? You don't agree <laughs> with me? That's outrageous. Well, right. How, they they, they talk a big game you. about uh, you know uh, academic freedom and intellectual curiosity, um, and that's what college is supposed to be about, about exploring new ideas. Um, but it, it seems like that the the rhetoric doesn't match the reality anymore, and I think it, it hasn't matched for a long time. And and so that's why we need to, to bring these colleges back to the First Amendment and, and remind them that, that free expression is, is the cornerstone of education and of critical thinking. Right. Thank you. Well, this is what I put on my Facebook uh, before the show. I said, to the Berkeley rioters, if you're wielding sledgehammers, physically assaulting people, spraying mace on bypassers, lighting fi- fires and torching whatever you can, destroying and vandalizing property and threatening physical violence, all because a conservative gay Jew is scheduled to speak on your campus, you are not protesting fasc- fascism. You are fascism. And what you did is not free speech. It's a crime. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and our model bill makes that perfectly clear because it it requires universities to impose uh, severe penalties for students who interfere with the free speech rights of others. And it, this is a, an important concept. It's it's not you know two speakers um, conflicting with each other. This this isn't a conflict of rights because you have no right to shout down someone else. If your if your goal is in protesting is to silence another speaker, you're not protesting. You're not introducing new ideas to the conversation. You're trying to shut down the conversation, and and what they're doing in Berkeley is uh, not only criminal, uh, but it's it's a, a violation of the the principle of free expression that's protected by the First Amendment, and it's uh, it's in a, a perfect example of of what we're trying to prevent with this with this model legislation. And and as I said, I think a lot of it goes back to the culture. And so the the probably the most important thing that this bill does is try to reset the culture. And so from freshman orientation, students are going to be exposed to this idea that the First Amendment matters and that free expression is central to the mission of the university. And maybe administrators will be exposed to that idea and faculty will be exposed to that idea for the the first time in a long time. Uh, And then, of course, it gives teeth to those concepts, too. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, we're up against a break. Can you stick with us through the break so we can can continue this conversation? Yeah, I'd love to. There's a lot more uh, interesting stuff to discuss. Absolutely. I think there is. We've not yet uh, hit all the points that need to be hit, so thank you for sticking with us. To our listeners, we are coming to you live. We've got Jim Manley, and, of course, we've got Rick Trader and me, George Landreth. We're coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360. That's our flagship station in Philadelphia, but most of you aren't in Philadelphia, and so we're coming to you from around the world. Uh, and it's, you know, whether it's American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AMF 24-7, we are everywhere, and we'll be right back. 
The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. This is the Conservative Commandos. I am George Landreth. I'm here with Rick Trader, and we've got our guest, Jim Manley here. We are having a very interesting conversation, which we'll get right back to. I just want to remind our listeners that if you want to hear a rebroadcast of the show today, check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com, ccrshow.com. You can also log on to Leading Edge Radio Network at 8 a.m. in the morning. At 11 p.m., you can log on to highplainstalkradio.com. And with this number and a phone, you can always listen to the Conservative Commandos, 832-999-1199. We've got Jim Manley here. He is a senior attorney at the Goldwater Institute. Um, he has spent his professional career defending our uh, basic rights, uh, Bill of Rights sorts of things, the right to bear arms, the right of self-defense, taxpayer rights, property rights, free speech rights, um, those sorts of things. He's been uh, doing a good job fighting that. And we have been talking about uh, what's going on in Berkeley and how that's not free speech. Now, Jim, you had mentioned uh, the, the idea of, of kind of conditioning freshmen as they come in to the idea that in college they're now big boys and girls and they're going to hear ideas that may or may not be um, ones they agree with, and that when they hear an idea they disagree with, um, they shouldn't like roll up into a fetal position, and they shouldn't cry, and they shouldn't feel assaulted or insulted. But instead, they should try to figure out why don't they agree with that, and formulate an argument to explain why they're what they believe is better. George, can I jump in for a minute? Sorry, Jim. Absolutely. But I'm sitting here listening to you. <laughs> Make them read the Constitution. Make them f understand what the First Amendment is. I mean, hello. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Is it as simple as that, Jim? It, I mean, it, in a sense, it is. And that's that's what our bill requires, is that, that public universities 
uh, teach students about the First Amendment uh, as part of their freshman orientation. And I think it is. It's, it's fundamental to what the college experience is all about. It's, it's about confronting new ideas uh, and, and, and thinking about them. And, and it seems that the, the impulse on campus is, is not to uh, engage with difficult ideas, but to, to shut them down to just run away from any ideas that, that don't match your preconceived vision of the world or your pre- professor's preconceived vision of the world. And I think we're all poorer for that. You know, whatever your views are, I think it's, it's really beneficial to, have, to be challenged and to have to defend your, your, your views to yourself and others. I think it makes us all smarter uh, in the end and gets us closer to the Absolutely. truth. Absolutely. You know, George, That's I just I, want to make... I was getting at. George, it's, I want to make one more comment, then I'll swing it back to you. Oh, I can't believe that we are in the United States of America and that we're faced with being... Uh, uh, we're, we're in a position that we have to defend free speech from a bunch of anarchists. But that just drives me crazy. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'll swing it back to you, George. But oh, I'm with I can't That's why it. I was phrasing the way I did. Because one way to, to to confront this argument is just to point out that the Constitution says I get to say what I want to say. But I. But my hope is, is that we can get these people convinced that there's a, the reason why the founders did that wasn't because they were arbitrary and capricious. They did that because they understood in a free society, the debate has to take place because that's how you come to decisions and you 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 essentially you argue with each other and you use arguments and facts and figures and and uh, and logic to try to reduce the level of disagreement and find some common ground but the problem with the other side is is when you stand up and say i think taxes should be lower or that government should be less in my face they just to me oh that's outrageous you can't say that how dare you i'm offended that's a you are you're a bad person and we shouldn't even talk and i shouldn't have to listen to you and then they feel righteous in that indignation that means that we actually cannot have a civil society that viewpoint that belief system that says i am i am correct and in fact righteous that i am indignant that you do disagree with me actually will prevent us from ever having a a, a functioning properly civil society it's going to break down and basically we forced to solve our problems with violence at least that's how i see it well it's i mean it, it's how things are Not turning I out right to solve I mean, look, at, look at berkeley saying, i think you're exactly way, right but if you if you can't talk then what are we left with right you know i mean yeah well, well, well i mean and, these and you're exactly right yeah i mean that, that's what's happening well, in berkeley right yeah exactly they they can't they they, they cannot bear to to uh, they cannot bear to see um, someone who disagrees with them. It's the idea that this guy is going to stand up there and say something that they vehemently disagree with is so offensive to them, and they are so sure they're right. They feel morally justified in making sure that he can't speak and destroying people's property and assaulting people and physically harming them. And they, and, and that is a sick, perverse belief system. And that is a belief system that once enough Americans believe it, we will actually have the same sort of society they have in Syria, the same, the same sort of society they have in Libya, the same sort of society they have in Iraq. It will be a, we'll have anarchy and, a, t- and mob tyranny. And that's what they're advocates for. If they think they're advocates for something else. They are not. They're advocates for tyranny of the majority. Well, yeah, and I mean, I think it's important to point out that, that our bill protects protesters just as much as it protects invited speakers because that conversation that dialogue is what's important from a first amendment perspective and that's why you know we're calling for mandatory uh suspension or expulsion for people who repeatedly violate uh, the first amendment rights of others but only after uh robust due process protections because what we're after here is is a conversation. We want people to be able to present controversial ideas and then to have other people present their ideas that are that conflict with those and and then we have a dialogue about it. Um, it's It's only the other side that that wants to shut down conversation. 
Oh, you're exactly right. Whether it's the climate change debate or anything else, anytime someone disagrees with you, their answer is the debate is over. It's not appropriate to talk about this. You need to shut your mouth, and we need to move on to some other topic. And that's how they run their that, – I mean, that's the left's way of dealing with things is you can't talk about this. And, um, and I would argue that there's really no topic that we shouldn't be able to talk about. I understand there's things that, I mean, we obviously shouldn't be advocating violence and harming people. But if we're going to have a serious conversation, there should be no problem in society that we can't thoughtfully sit down and have a conversation. There should not be a requirement on me or you to agree with them. We should be able to sit down and talk and agree uh, in advance that we may not agree. And that's okay. But for some people, the mere fact that we disagree is somehow uh, a sign of, of our unrighteousness, of our, you know, of our bad faith. It's, it's like it, we're good people if we agree with them, and we're bad people if we don't. You saw this with Brexit. With Brexit, there was only one plausible explanation for voting for Europe, to, for Britain to leave the EU, and it was because you were bad. You had bad beliefs, bad views, and, uh, and you had a, a bad heart. Right, not that you're wrong, but that your motivations are suspect. Right, you're, you're right. Whole, he's, he's, you're, exactly, that's what I'm getting at. Is there, some, there was something yeah. deficient about you as a person, and that's how they approached it. And, and, that, and that's my problem, is that once we get to that debate, that point in debate, we will not have a civil society. We have to be able to talk our problems out, and, and, and the left seems unwilling to do that. I'm always happy to debate. I, I love debate. It's what I do for a living. The left always wants everyone to shut up. We are, Jim, we are out of time, but I want you to tell people how they can follow the work that you do. You've been a champion fighting for our rights, so how, if our listeners say, Jim was hitting it on all cylinders, i got to follow this guy, i got to see what he's up to, how do they do that? Well, uh, on this bill, uh, check out uh, Peter Berkowitz had a really nice write-up in the Wall Street Journal on Tuesday. Check that out. Robert Shibley over at FIRE has, has written some nice things about it as well. And uh, at both those locations, you can get a link to our website, uh, which is goldwaterinstitute.org. Uh, goldwaterinstitute.org. Yeah, goldwaterinstitute.org. And that has all of our property rights work, our economic liberty work, uh, and, and our free speech work. Thanks so much, Jim. We really appreciate it. It's great to have you with us. We're going to have to have you back. You're awesome. My pleasure. I'd we are coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Network Studios. WNJC 1360 is our flagship station in Philadelphia. And, of course, we're coming to you around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, AM FM 24-7, and iHeartRadio. Don't go away. Rick and I will be right back. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 
If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back, Conservative Commandos. Rick Trader and I, George Landreth, are here, and we are ready to... uh, We've got a special guest. We've saved... uh, a really awesome guest for for last. I want to remind you, if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. You can always log in to high to uh, Leading Edge Radio Network at nine, excuse me, at eight a.m. and High Plains 
talkradio.com at 11 p.m. to hear the show, get rebroadcast. And you can always listen in on your phone if you dial this number. So you don't even need a radio or your computer. Just your phone and this number, 832-999-1199. We have with us Representative Jody Heiss. He serves in the U.S. House of Representatives. He's from the uh, the... 10th Congressional District of Georgia. When uh, Before he ran for Congress, uh, Representative Heiss served as a senior pastor as well as holding positions at the Georgia Baptist Convention. He uh, was also a professor um, at uh, Luther Rice Seminary, and he was a conservative talk radio host. He co-founded Hope for America Rallies. Um, it was formed to teach Christian influences in American fundamentals, and he also is the author of two books, A Call to Reclaim America, and It's Now or Never. Congressman Heiss campaigned as a committed, serious conservative and economic reformer. He went so far, gasp here, if you're at the New York Times, go find a safe place, curl up in a ball, get under the table. He said that he would look to eliminate all federal spending that was not delineated in the Constitution. Wow. Now, that is dangerous, isn't it? I mean, if you're from the New York Times, it is. Anyhow, for the rest of us, that makes him a champion. Congressman Heiss, welcome to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Rick, great to be with you, as always. I appreciate the opportunity to be on. Absolutely. Um, we have um, a number of issues that we could talk with you about, and I just want to make sure that we, if, if we have you for the next really for the next half hour or 25 minutes, w I would love to hear what you have to say about things like the National Prayer Breakfast. Um, I understand you've got a new bill called the uh, Free Speech Fairness Act, another bill called the Sanctity of Human Life uh, Act, and we'd love to talk about the Johnson Amendment. That's gotten some news press today. I know that you've got some... Uh, uh, some interesting things there to say. And then, of course, we've got the Supreme Court nomination that's out there. And I know that's a lot to fit in a few minutes. Uh, you think you're up to it? I can. I, I can. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm being told right now I've got about 15 minutes. I have another interview okay. I've got to run to. Fair enough. Then let's run through as much of it as we can, and you tell us when you've got to go. But okay. um, how about we just start and go down the list? National Prayer Breakfast. What, what, what was a, of, note, of note there this morning? Oh, my goodness. It was, uh, this is the third one that I've been a part of, and it was uh, by far the, the best, the most effective. It was um, well attended, uh, at least a couple, two, 3,000 people who were there from all over the world, and uh, just absolutely spectacular. There was a great spirit of excitement, enthusiasm, uh, uh, just uh, prayer, uh, recognition that we need God back in our country and uh, the president spoke in a powerful way, as did the Senate chaplain, uh, Barry Black, and it was just spectacular. Wow, there was all kinds of uh, triggers that we should have, we should have given trigger warnings to our listeners. In our earlier section, we were talking about safe spaces on campuses, so I'm being a little facetious, but um, it is sad that the idea that um, uh, talking about the uh, importance of having God um, since he's the author of liberty, as one of our great hymns says, um, uh, that we would, you know, think that maybe he would have something to say about government and the, and the pursuit of, of a free society, uh, that that's somehow become controversial. But uh, I agree. I thought that those are some good events there. How about you? Or, uh, you have a bill, the Free Speech Fairness Act. What's up with that? Yeah, the Free Speech Fairness Act deals with the Johnson Amendment that you referred to a while ago. I personally have... Uh, been involved with the Johnson Amendment, trying to get that repealed for uh, really since 2008, nearly 10 years now. And a lot of people don't know about this. Uh, uh, the president now is speaking a lot about it. In fact, he referenced it again today, saying that he will totally repeal this thing if given the opportunity. The uh, Johnson Amendment really goes back to LBJ back in 1954. He very closely narrowly won a Senate race from Texas. And the reason he almost lost is because a couple of nonprofits came after him and almost had him defeated because they thought he was soft on communism. So when he got to Washington behind closed doors without any debate on the Senate floor, he had inserted into the IRS code a brief paragraph that basically says nonprofits cannot be engaged in the political process or they could 
potentially lose their tax exempt status. That has not been challenged now for over 60 years. And it has, frankly, become a huge bully stick to threaten uh, churches and nonprofits right out of political involvement and right out of their free speech rights. And so we've been involved personally since 2008. We can get into that if you like to. But the Free Speech Fairness Act basically says if you're a nonprofit just going about the regular course of your purpose as a nonprofit, uh, you can address political issues without threat or intimidation for our, from our government or without any uh, possibility of losing your tax exempt status. So the IRS can't target us either then? That's exactly right, and they've been doing it. You know, when Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're uh, talking to a guy who runs an organization that was targeted. Uh, yeah, so and, court, and, and court I was as well. That's stated. what I say. Yeah. I've lived through this thing, and I've been a part of it. In fact, I was, uh, in 2008, one of 33 pastors across the, the country that uh, purposely defied the IRS code and started the, this challenge, and uh, it's, it's just... Um, you know, I've seen it firsthand, like you, I've lived through it, and this is something we've got to deal with, and we're going to win. That's good news. That's that. That's one thing I have to say. I am at, you know, Donald Trump's had a, a fast start. If he were a sprinter, he came out of the blocks hard and fast. That's good. There's one thing, though, that I know he's 100% wrong about, and that is there will never come a time when we get so tired of winning that we don't want to win anymore. <laughs> Remember when he said, we'll I agree tired with you. And we are not going to get tired of winning. I know we're I'm not, not. going to get tired of winning. And uh, right now we're getting some big victories under our belt, and we're setting ourselves up for some major victories in the very near future. It's an exciting time to be here. It's a historic time, and not only for those of us who are uh, here in Congress, but for our entire nation. This is happening because the people of this country stood up. They've made themselves known. Their voices have been heard. They have demanded that we take our country back, and this is hats off to our entire country for people taking a stand. And it's happening now, right before our eyes. Well, that's good news. How about the sanctity of human life, Bill? Um, Is that H.R. 586? 586, that's correct. The uh, sanctity of human life is a a personhood bill that that, uh, defines and recognizes that life begins at conception. And uh, that's basically all it says. And it's, um, you know, when else does it? You know, the importance of this goes back to Roe v. Wade. Uh, Justice Blackmun at that time said that if, if uh, it could ever be determined as to when the, a, a, the personhood actually starts, that, um, you know, the, the entire decision of Roe v. Wade would then potentially be up for grabs. And science over the years has given us ample evidence as to when personhood begins and we know that it all happens at conception and so this bill just acknowledges that that uh, life begins at conception that is um, good news it seems to me uh, science supports that conclusion I think when I uh read the scriptures, I get that same feeling, so I, I think science and religious uh, knowledge are, are of one accord on that. Um, Absolutely. So how do you feel about the uh, likelihood of those, uh, those things happening? I mean, should people, you know, should people be uh, optimistic? We, we're, we're, are we going to win? I think we're going to yeah, win a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't know how much we're going to win on, on these uh, pro-life bills. We've already had a huge win with the uh, Hyde Amendment. Uh, which uh, prohibits uh, tax dollars from going to, to abortions. That now is uh, already gone through the House on the way to the Senate. We have a president who has, through executive order, uh, reinstated the Mexico City policy, preventing tax dollars from being used for abortions internationally. So, you know, right now we are in a great position to see some uh, very strong, positive pro-life legislation move forward through the House as well as the Senate and the White House. And there, I can just tell you, there's a truckload of bills that are, are waiting. You have mine, uh, you've got uh, uh, the uh, pain capable bill, you've got a born alive bill, you've got heartbeat bill. I mean, there's a host of them that are waiting in line. And, you know, we're gonna push this and go as far as we can while we have the opportunity to protect and defend life. You know, our founders recognized that the right to life is self-evident. And it is also unalienable. It's something that's granted to us from God and therefore cannot be taken away from us 
uh, from man or by government. So we're very hopeful and very optimistic to see some uh, enormous strides in that direction. That's good news. I, I agree. The word unalienable is important because unalienable means you can't even give it away. You That's can't right. give it. You can't sell it. You can't. It is essentially it is stuck to you, and and it, it is yours, and you cannot dispose of it. And uh, and that's how important it was when you say when you say a right's inalienable. Uh, that's that's pretty significant, and I think uh, we've lost the meaning of that. So I appreciate your good work. Well, well are you about out of time, much. or do you have a few more minutes with us? I've got about uh, three minutes. You've got about three minutes. Okay. Well, let's yes, use that time well. Um, let's go to uh, the uh, Supreme Court nomination with uh, Judge Neil Gorich. Yeah, a fantastic choice. You know, this is um, everything that I'm hearing and reading about him at this point. This is a judge that is going to be right in line with uh, uh, Scalia, and, you know, we're not going to miss a beat. I don't believe with uh, this nomination, and I believe that we're going to see the confirmation go through the Senate. It's going to be very difficult for this not to uh, go through, and I I could not be more pleased. And again, this is another example of the president coming out in a full sprint. And, uh, you know, a lot of people went to the polls uh, precisely because of the issue of the Supreme Court, and uh, this, um, this nominee is absolutely fantastic and I, I could not be more pleased so he won't be a disappointment he's not another david Souter, then is what you're saying uh from everything i understand this is a real deal and we've we've had people go back and uh, look at every decision he's made in the last 10 years he is consistent he is spot on and uh he, he's uh, a constitutionalist and he, he believes the constitution means what it says and says what it means and if we want to change it, there's a legislative process of doing so, but it's not up to the judicial branch to change it at their will. And uh, so I think it's an outstanding choice. That's what I've heard about him, too. So I'm glad to hear that you are hearing the same thing. You're a man in the know. We appreciate that this. Um, uh, Congressman Ice, you have been generous with your time. We understand that you've got other obligations, and we have to let you go. Thanks for coming on to the Conservative Commandos, and uh, we hope to have you back. You're fighting the good fight there in uh, up on Capitol Hill. And, hey, listen, uh, you're fighting it, too. We're all in this thing together, and I just thank you for the, the job you do. And uh, as always, it's an honor to be on with you. Thank you so much. God thank speed. You. Likewise. All right, and you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet. Don't go away. George and I will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Drink my wine. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. 
Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. For rebroadcast. Please check out our website, ccrshow.com, ccrsnetwork.com, or at 8 a.m., log on to Leading Edge Radio Network, 11 p.m., cyplanestalkradio.com, or you could hear our show any time of the day from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. You know, George, our president is under assault from these idiots from the left, and I'm encouraging our listeners to call their congressmen, Call their senators and say, hey, we elected Donald Trump to do a job. You need to get behind him. You need to support him. If you're a Democrat, you need to stop this this liberal silliness. Now, I want to give out that number, George. Number to reach your senator or congressman in Washington, and please use this number. 202-225-3121. 202-225-3121. Two two five three one two one, and George, it cracks me up how the liberal left. Uh, there's a great article that you sent to me from the Federalist. Here are nine of the most unfringed reactions to Trump, Trump's executive order on immigration. Great article, George. It is, and um, it's just interesting. You know, you look at what they've done. First of all, to put this in perspective. They acted as this wall is this terrible idea. One, Obama is renting a house in D.C. They're building a huge wall around it. Mm-hmm. 2006, the Democrats controlled the Senate. They passed a law that authorized 700 miles worth of uh, um, of, of, of wall uh, on our southern border, as well as lights and cameras and other sensors to enhance security. Um, 80 of 100 senators, including 23 Democrats, approved the bill in the Senate, including... Barack Obama, hmm. Joe Biden, Go and figure. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but and yet now the world is coming unhinged. It's absolutely unhinged. A few, you know, a decade later, a Republican says, okay, I know you said you're going to build the wall. We're actually going to do it now. You never actually did it. Um, and now they're becoming unglued. <laughs> George, what cracks me up is the reaction to Donald Trump telling the Prime Minister of Australia that remember those 1,200 foreign refugees that is in Australia, some island that belongs to Australia? Well, guess what? We're we're not going to take those prisoners. We're not going to bring them to the United States. See what Barack Obama did back in November after the election. He said to the prime minister of, of Australia, oh, we'll take those prisoners off your hands. We'll take those illegal refugees off your hands. Now, George, I've been to Australia. Wonderful country. Huge country. Has a lot of desert there. Okay? I I would say to the Prime Minister of Australia, take those people and put them in the outback. It's very similar to the homes that they lived in and are very used to. I I admire Donald Trump for saying, no, no, no. You're not going to bring them here. But the left, 
Once again, the left becomes unhinged. Well, one of the problems I think we have is in a world... In the, in the 19th century, we were not a welfare state. So you could pretty much have a much more uh, generous uh, allowing people to come to America because all you're letting them do is come to America and work hard and try to make their way. Mm-hmm. The problem today is, of course, most of these people are coming from hell holes, to be perfectly frank. And so coming to America to, to get a subsistence level, um, you know, food stamps and other benefits actually would put them... Uh, heads and heads and just way better than where they're coming from. So that's the problem with having a uh, this sort of open borders thing in a uh, with a welfare state. It just doesn't work. You can't do that. We used to track people who came to America because they wanted to work hard and get ahead. And I think we we still get some of those. But you have to be honest. There's got to be the incentive. People say, oh, they can't get those benefits. And all I can say is that's not true. Um, they can get driver's licenses. They can vote. Um, you know, don't give me this garbage you you know that may be the intention or whatever but i know that's not how it works out george what what i don't understand immigrants when my grandparents on my mom when my mother's mother and father came to the united states in 1911 they come here to get away from what was going on in Europe. They came here to be, to take part in the American dream. They ta- they came here to become Americans. Okay, right. What I what troubles me about a lot of the immigrants who want to come here, the the they don't want to become part of the United States. They want to bring their country here. Right. And, and to me, that is not assimilating into our society. You, you don't I, I think the it's American awesome if they want to, you know, families, you know, their, their traditional culture, keep some of that with them. I understand, you know, uh, 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 Italian-Americans uh, mm-hmm. have some uh, things that they will do differently than, say, some Polish-Americans. And that's fine. I don't mean, but they became Americans. They, they were fundamentally Americans. They spoke they English. Did, they didn't want to bring, as a lot of these yeah. refugees... They didn't want to bring Sharia law here and make Sharia law the land. Exactly. The, for escaping the law something they the didn't like. What they brought here, and I'm grateful to them for that, right. at least in the case of the Italians, is really good lasagna and pasta. Right. And hey, I'm, George, I'm glad they brought that. And I do not want them to give that up, by the way. Absolutely. Hey, George, believe it or not, we are at the end of our show. I want to thank our guest today, Joe, Mim- Joe Miller, Jim Man- uh, Manley. Uh, Congressman Jody Heiss and George, I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co host. But for right now, we're out of time. We got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. And we will see you tomorrow on the radio. 1360 AM. WNJC. Washington Township. Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty Health Share. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org.